Hi, Dan here. Hope you're doing well. In this lesson, I'm going to show you that Tommy Cogbill inspired bass line. This is from my new book, which is 100 bass lines, a bit like this, inspired by the great R&B, soul and Motown players. And Tommy Cogbill was a really interesting guy, actually. Brilliant player that played a lot of guitar for Aretha Franklin, as well as bass, and he played for everyone, actually. And Jacko was a big fan of his playing. And you can see why, because when he plays a bit like this, really fluid style, really melodic, very improvised. And I'm going to show you this exact bass line. Uh, not every bass line from my book has a backing track, but this one does. And I'll, I'll put a link so you can download this because you can improvise using this. But let's do the, the actual bass line first. We're in the key of G major. And in the book, I teach a lot of patterns because for me, this style of music, this genre, is, is very pattern orientated. I mean, look at this. So we're starting on G, that's the fifth fret of, of the D string. And that's your root note. The E and the D, fret seven and five respe respectively of the A string, are the major sixth and the fifth, right? You know, you've heard bass lines that use that kind of... really influ influential that pattern and actually this kind of music did influence a lot of the players that came after you know the 60s the, you know the 70s rock players and beyond they use a lot of these patterns so that's another good reason to to get some of them under your fingers so you've got your root major sixth and you've got this this fifth here as well it's quite syncopated this line so i'll play it slowly we're going one two three four Okay, that's the pattern. I'm playing it first finger, third finger first. If you find another way that you like to use, then by all means do that. Then we're doing a very quick shift to the C. That's the next chord. It's quite a brief um, foray into that C chord before we go to the G. So it's just C, C, and then C, D. And the line here. That is another pattern that we see a lot, uh, major pentatonic scale. Starting on the G, it's G, A, B, D, E. So third fret, fifth fret, seventh fret. And I'm playing it first finger, then shifting again back to the fifth fret. I'm now in position. And the D on, and the E can be played fingers one and three on the A string. So three, four whole thing. Then it does the same thing again with a nice little line at the end. We've got a C7 chord here and the first bit is very similar to the G where we've got a major pentatonic type of a thing. Same pattern that I taught you. So C, D, E frets 3, 5 and 7 of the A string. I'm doing a little slide from the D to the E, fret five to seven, plucking three times and then doing a slide. And then you've got the, the fifth fret and seventh fret of the D, the G and the A. And I advise you to know also the intervals within the patterns. And I'll show you that in the book as well. We've got a root, major, second and third. We've got this fifth and major sixth, very common soul R&B patterns. You know, knock on wood. You can make so many bass lines just with that. So what are we doing? Got this little lick here. So we're gonna bend. And I bent upwards towards the ceiling, but you can push the string down as well if, if that's how you wanna do it. So you do a little half sort of half step bend up and then down again and then i'm going fifth fret seventh fret that's the g to the a g to the a first finger third finger now i'm using my second finger here to play the e on the seventh fret of the a string which is a bit sort of awkward but it works and we got that same pattern as before G, G, E, D. I'll do it slowly. 
That's the whole thing. You have got a backing track with this one. What you can do is you can improvise. We're in the key of G. If you haven't heard Son of a Preacher Man by Dusty Springfield, especially the outro, you need to listen to it because Tommy Cogbill on that, he really goes off on one at the end. Very fluid, improvised style. You can hear he was a very talented guitar player as well because he's he's using the upper register. And that's what it was the inspiration behind this line. So... That's just a major pentatonic G because that's the key we're in. That's the pattern I showed you. And that's the same up the octave. So all those notes, he used a lot of slides and uh, you know, in different directions. Hammer-ons. It creates a very lyrical style, very fluid if you play in that sort of Tommy Cogbill style. And then C7, so if you know the notes, that note that we're bending to, which is a B flat, that's your seventh in the C7 chord. So if you know that, Jacko used that a lot. He was very influenced by this style of music and by Tommy Cogwell in particular. That's what I like about learning stuff like this. You can really see the sort of lineage of great players going back really from blues and then into soul, R&B and Motown. Amazing. So if you want to learn more about that, do check out the book. I'll put a link below. Any questions about this one, let me know. Thanks for watching. See you next time.